Oh! What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm getting the Audi A4 ready for the shoot today. Well, I'm getting the Porsche ready for the shoot today. Uh... Based off the schedule here, the Audi A4 is, is up. I know, but this is such a cool car and we have such a great opportunity here. I really want to film this one this week. Yeah, but that's not even a, that doesn't even follow the rules. That's not a $5,000 car, is it? I wish, but no, it's not. It's not a $5,000 car, but you know, like they say, if you don't break the rules, you don't drive cool cars. So not only are you not following the rules, you're taking away from my camera time. I'm really excited about this A4. Okay, let's settle this. The old fashioned way? No, not that way. The new way. Already? Talk about a turbo lag. <laughs> Talk about a turbo time warp. How long have you been here for? <laughs> well, I took a nap, had a little lunch, and now I'm getting ready to work on the car. Well, I love these Porsches. The, the 911 air-cooled Porsches are so cool. Such a fun car to work on. Yeah, well, now you know why I wanted to film it. But I'll tell you the story behind it. Our friends at Motorsport, big fans of the show, are only one. <laughs> <laughs> However, they came to us after watching what we did with the Boxer yeah. and said, we have got this 993 we want to get ready to sell and we would love for you to do some lithium love on it. Well, and it doesn't follow any of the rules. Well, like we talked about, those who follow the rules never drive cool cars. So let's break the rules though because we could be part of history. No, well, I'm down to break the rules just this one time, but uh, I want to take it on this on the weekend here on this weekend. <laughs> so if you want to take this on the weekend, you take it up with Motorsports because remember last time you asked, I borrowed the McLaren. Yeah. They about fell out of their chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well tell, tell us a little bit about the car. Okay, well, you know, and this is why I was so excited about this car. It is a 1997 993 and it represents the second to the last year of air-cooled engines before they got rid of them. Okay. And if you're a Porsche guy, that means a lot because that is the entire generation completely changed to liquid cooled. And it sort of got the Porsche people a little bit angry. All yeah. the big fans wanted to stick with the air cooled. But I got to tell you, when you compare the air cooled to the liquid cooled, Porsche did the right thing. <laughs> yeah. Liquid cooled is a little bit better. Yeah. But it, it is a beautiful car. Oh, it's incredible. I mean, it really, the lines on this car are amazing. But the funny thing is, is we talk about rules and $5,000 cars. With a car like this, it can either be worth 25 grand or 60 grand. It just depends on what an example it is. Yeah. And I think we can go through this and really add some value to our friends at Motorsport. Well, let's go through it and see what we need to do. All right, well, you know, silver paint. This paint is 24 years old, so we're gonna go through and we're gonna not exactly do a color correction because after looking at the paint meter and we'll show the people who are watching later. The paint thickness? Yeah, it gets a little thin after that many washes. Yeah. So we're gonna take a real soft approach to this and we're just gonna enhance the paint. I'm not gonna cut into it. However, we do have our new scratch remover, which there's a couple of scratches throughout here. We're just gonna give it a try, see how it works out. So as we walk through it, I'm gonna go through, bring out the life and the color of the paint. I think because of the year of the car, I'm just gonna go with seal and squeal. I like the way it polishes. We'll start out with a finesse compound. And as always, we start every car with a clay barring. Right. So we're gonna do that. 
we're gonna do our finesse compound, and then afterwards, I'm just gonna polish it out with seal and squeal, and I think this thing will look like brand new. Yeah, there's a hardly any shine in the paint, so. No, it, and. It's looking pretty dull. You talk about in detailing small nuances that make the difference. On camera, it reflect. you know, as we watch the shows, you see it reflect the light, and you're like, that car did not yeah, look it that good. Not any light. <laughs> <laughs> However, this is one of those cars. And so the next thing, what we're gonna do is walk through, and we're gonna do a little bit on the windows. I'm gonna show you how we go through and bring this glass so it is so transparent. Well, we had some viewers who actually asked if you guys could do a window tutorial. So I think that that would be awesome yeah. to show, show people what we do with it. That would be great. And so we're gonna go through, and then we're gonna do the usual gratuitous trim, go around, clean up the wheels, and come back here to the, the grill, grill and make that trim serum. Trim. Yep, a little trim serum, you know, the usual routine, but we'll, we'll just bring all this back to life. And this car, the lines on it are so sexy. When we start letting the light refract off of the fenders and yeah. the wide body that it has, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be sick. Yeah. And then, obviously, I'm on the interior. Yep, but, you know, what we wanna remember is, with a $5,000 car, we've got a lot of leeway. We can do creative things, and if we screw it up, not that big of a deal. But with this car, we want to keep it as stock as possible and bring it back to where it was when it came out of the factory. Well, what's the value, by the way? We didn't really talk about the value at all. Well, with this car, I think where we sit, it's maybe a $40,000 car, it's fairly low miles. When we get done, I dare to guess, 52 maybe? I might be kidding myself, but we do do good work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, what do we want to do on the interior here? Well, as you know, they told us at Motorsport, they've got some leather issues here where the leather has been sitting so long, it's actually dehydrated and shrunk. Or we could try that new technique that you were, that you were talking about earlier this week. I like where you're coming from. So we have a new technique that we've developed that we've had some good luck with. Controversial maybe, but all of our best techniques are a little controversial. But we'll show you how we're gonna rehydrate this leather and bring back some humidity. And we don't usually like to use steam on leather because it's wet and it's messy and it gets down in the perforations, but we'll show you how we're gonna bring the humidity back up into the car and try to get that leather back to its original shape. So after that, you're just gonna go to town and go on the inside and get this thing ready to detail and sell. I am the interior expert. Yes. <laughs> so there we go with it. We're gonna just get this car looking great and I think it's gonna be a phenomenal car to look at when we're done. Okay, well let's get started then. All right, let's do it. Sorry to interrupt your current programming, or your Detail and Bell episode. However, in the front office, they wanted us to talk to you about the importance of subscribing and telling us that you like the kind of content we're producing. So like and subscribe. And keep us employed. <laughs> oh, looks like you got a new toy. Yeah, they got me a new torque buffer. But I gotta tell you, I really like my old buffer. I'd had that thing since high school, I think. Did they have electric buffers back in that day? Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, okay. <laughs> but well, what are we doing? Show us what well, we're doing. Well, I'm about ready to go through and go through and correct the paint on this car. However, you know, I really wanted to, you know, our favorite part of the show besides driving cool cars and watching them transform is fan mail. Yeah. Fan, fan mail. Okay. Fan mail is a stretch. Let's just say we love to read suggestions that viewers have about the show. And so I thought we would read a couple of emails and really do what they want to do. What do you think? Yeah. So let's read a couple. Okay. So here's the first one. Dear Detail and Bell guys, uh, you really should not even be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, go let's, skip that. let's okay. skip that one. I knew there was a good one in here somewhere. Okay, here's one. Hey, I really enjoy your show and oftentimes even find it mildly amusing. Oh. 
Yeah. Okay, we're That's on a roll here. Yeah. <laughs> However, I really think it would do all the viewers more good if you did more in-depth instructional videos so we learn to get good results. You know, we've heard that. Yeah. And we try. We try. We try to go it. But time more is short. Depth. Yeah. But 20 I minutes is for one video sometimes can can be a little bit long. Yeah, it's so. it's tough. But I think he brings up a good point. And we do and we always have wanted this show to be about the viewers. The viewer. And yeah. being part of the process. So what I think I'm gonna do is this is the perfect car to show beginners how to buff it out correctly and really bring that paint back. Okay. So I'm gonna take my new buffer. You guys didn't throw away my old one, did you? <laughs> I just don't, I don't know. That's the worst. You just have to crank it. <laughs> okay, but I'm gonna go through, take the new buffer, show everyone how we bring paint back to life, and we'll back see to if life we can. Might be a little stretched, but. We'll see what you can do. Oh, I got a defibrillator in case it doesn't work. <laughs> Clear, kaboom! So what we'll do is really show the people from start to finish what to look for in a car and how to buff it correctly. Okay. And we'll see how our viewers react to it. Okay, well, it looks like a one-man one man job here. So. <laughs> well, we only have one viewer. One man seems to work. <laughs> okay. Well, holler at me if you need me. All right, great. Okay, so as some of you guys heard, a lot of our viewers really want more instructional video on how to bring a car back to life. And so we thought, what better car could you do it on than a 97 993? And let's, let me tell you, this paint could use some help. So let's go through step by step of what we do when we do a color correction or even just buff out the paint to bring back the color. And we'll start from here. The first step you always want to do when getting ready to buff your car is to go through and clay bar it. Now we've done three or four episodes where we go in depth on how to properly clay bar the car. So you can go back and see those episodes on where to start. But after you've clay barred the car and taken out all the impurities and everything like that, the next thing we want to do is really kind of assess what we want to achieve here and what success looks like when we're done. Now, most of you are gonna have a pretty good history of your car. You're gonna know how old the paint is, what it's gone through. Now, when we do most of our cars, we have no idea about that car. We don't know if it's been repainted usually, we don't know how thick the clear coat is, so we wanna be very careful, particularly with a car like this where the paint is 24 years old. You can imagine how many washes it's gone through. So before we start getting aggressive and cutting into paint and lifting scratches, we really want to see what we have to work with. Now, not everyone will have this, but like I said, you're going to have your own history on your car. But for cars like this, we certainly don't want to take the chance of ruining the paint or going all the way through the clear coat. And we are, we are fortunate though, because Porsche quit doing single stage paint jobs back in 1988. And we've moved on to double stage paint, which means the pigment or your primer first, then the pigment and then a clear coat. So what we use is a paint thickness gauge. We're gonna go through and see really how much paint we have to work with throughout this car and how aggressive we can get with the buffing process or maybe even wet sanding it. There's a lot of things we can do but we will bring this paint back. So what we do is we start out here and we get a gauge. So right here, we're at 4.3 mil. That is pretty thin by factory standards. We would expect to see six to seven. However, every car company is different. So what we usually will start to do is we'll go to areas of the car that we know have not been washed or abused too much like a door jam. And we'll hit that door jam and get our reading and we'll get an idea of how thick we should be. And here, we come up to a five reading, five milliliters, in, millimeters instead of the 4.3. So we, we've got some paint to work with. I think we're gonna be okay. So once we've determined how thick the paint is, we wanna go through and determine what kind of products we're gonna use. Now there's a lot of different directions you can go. However, for the beginner, we recommend you go with a sponge when you're using your buffing pad. And that's because 
they're just not very aggressive and it's very difficult to screw it up. And that's really important to build your confidence as you're going. So all the sponges or buffing pads made of foam, let's say, come in different grades. You've got your black polishing, you've got your yellow cutting, which is the most aggressive. We've got our mid-range orange, and then we have our light polish, which is white. Now, for this particular car, since it doesn't belong to us, and our job is just to make it look beautiful, we're gonna go mid-range first and see how that works out and go through it and really try to bring that paint back to where it was when it came off the line. So we get everything else out. We've determined we're gonna go with a medium pad. The next thing we're gonna do is get out our buffer. Now, not everyone owns a buffer. So you can do this by hand. You're just gonna burn a lot of calories doing it. And for the sake of time, we use a buffer and move it from there. The other nice thing about these pads is they don't create a lot of heat. Now, often if we get paint job that is in terrible condition, we'll use a wool pad. And that is very aggressive and it's very easy to create so much heat, you kind of do weird things to the clear coat. We don't want to do that here. We just want to show you how you can do this without any chance of a mistake. So we're going to hook this to our pad, get our cloths out of the way. Now, the number one thing I like to do, in this case, we're going to use our still in test phase finesse compound. And I like this because it's not very aggressive. It's gonna let us see how soft the clear coat is on this car, and then we can go from there. Now, what we do here is when we're starting out with a brand new pad, is we like to prime the pad. So we're gonna put on a little bit more product than you normally would, but we wanna really get that thing lubricated. Now, when you're buffing a car, think in terms of you never want a dry surface to touch another dry surface. So we really want to get this pad where we need it to be. Now we can make sure that we're not going to skid out on the paint, so to speak, when the dry pad hits it. Now what we're going to do is take some pea-sized dollops, and that will be the product that we start out with. We get a lot of questions on, well, how much area should I do? There's really no right or wrong answer. We could argue till the cows come home about two feet versus three feet. We're kind of fans of the two by two. You know, just grab a section. Some people say 18 by 18. It doesn't matter. It's what you feel comfortable with. But start out with a section that you can build your confidence with. And so what we do is we come in. The first thing you want to do is get rid of the cord because you're going to be done buff and this part's gonna look great and you're gonna look down and have scratches all along the side panel. So we throw the cord over. Now we take our finesse compound and we want to spread it throughout the area we're gonna be doing. Now, remember we've primed the pad as well. So we've got plenty of product. The big thing you don't wanna do is overdo it with the product because you're gonna clog up the pad and things start going bad as you get to the end of the car. So now what I do is I'm going to start up the, the oh well, we just lost power. We're going to start this up at about a two speed to spread around the product. Now, don't do that rookie move. I just dusted the paint, but I was right in the middle of talking. We're just going to use it at a low speed and get the product spread around the panel. Don't worry about the plastics and things like that right off the bat, but try not to hit them because you just want to keep that as good as possible. I'm going to go on a backwards, forwards motion. Come down here. It's important to try to keep the pad as flat to the surface as possible. And at this speed, you really can't do any damage. We're just spreading the product. So we come back and we're going to do a cross hatch just to make sure we cover all the paint area. Okay, now that the product has spread, we're going to turn up the speed a little and start flattening the paint. On this particular setup, we're not going to go too deep. All we want to do is bring back that silver color, and we're going to lay that clear coat nice and flat so it refracts light. And that's really what makes paint shine, is how it sends light off. If you see a scratch in a car and it looks white, it's because it's like a, it's almost like a crevice and the light is reflecting in multiple ways. And when it does that, it creates the color white. 
and you end up seeing that visually. So when we flatten this, we're gonna get a really nice mirror-like finish. So let's try it and see where we go. We're gonna go at about a four speed with about medium pressure. And do about five passes. And now we're gonna go the other direction. And then I like to frame out and come back this direction. So the condition of your paint is really gonna dictate how long you do this for and how aggressive you get. But remember, you wanna keep the surface lubricated. Don't overwork the compound. And then when we're done, we'll set this over here, we're gonna come back through and take the compound off. Now usually when we're done with a compound, we're gonna get a nice shine, but we're not gonna get a mirror-like shine. That will come when we go to the polishing stage. We're going to wipe this down, see if there's any life under here after. We didn't really exfoliate much on the paint. We really just tried to flatten it out a bit and bring back some of the shine. And I think we're off to a pretty good start. That is starting to look better already. And that finesse compound comes off so easily, which makes it really nice. All right. so. Next, we're gonna to move to the polishing part, and we will try to bring that shine by flattening it out, and we use a product called Seal and Squeal, which has some nice qualities and polymers in it, which will lay flatly across here and really pop this paint. So, we'll be right back with the polishing. Okay, so we've taken our first passes at the paint with our finesse compound. And now, I think we're really making some good progress, but we want to step it up just a notch. So we're going to put on our product called Seal and Squeal. Now this has active amino polymers in it, but we've also mixed in some pumice and various polishing agents. So it's going to go through and really lay down a beautiful shine here, but it's going to seal at the same time. So we're protecting the paint as we're beautifying it. This is pretty important to do and choose a product that gives you those options. So once again, we've chosen the white polish pad. Now you can go even finer with a black pad if you want, but for the sake of convenience, we're gonna actually do the white pad. And I'm gonna, once again, prime the pad, get it ready to go, making sure that it's plenty lubricated and we have some reserves up in there. Perfect. Now we're gonna put on our dollops, pea size. Just like that. And we are going to spread the paint around. Now the tendency is, is the more confident you get, the more area you try to cover at once. Not recommended. Because as things begin to dry out, you start to lose kind of an idea of when it's time to re-up the product on the pad. This way you can really keep a close eye on it and see where you're going and what's going on with the paint. So let's get started on this one. At about 1.5, we're gonna spread the paint around, spread the polish around again. And you can see here where we hit the plastic. It really isn't detrimental to do that because if you look at the original plastic, we've actually added some oils in there and brought that coloration back but it can be a little bit of a task to get in there and clean out the stuff. So do it with caution. Now that we've got an even spread across there, we're gonna hit the throttle a little bit, take us up to about 4.0 and start our five passes.
Once again, work on keeping the pad as flat to the surface as possible. And you know, I kind of get into the zone sometimes and I forget my patterns, but don't worry about it. It's not gonna make any difference. We just wanna make sure we get all the paint covered. All right, I think you get the idea. We don't want to put you to sleep. Now we're going to go back through, and I like to use different color towels as I'm going through the process to make sure that I'm not mixing them up and I don't rub off the polish with a cloth that has been used on the compounds and so forth. It can just create little issues when you're done and you're not sure why something went wrong. So it's better if you really keep things sorted that way. Now I'm going to go through and take off the seal and squeal. And man, you can feel that paint just get quiet. I think we've really kind of lifted it up and I can hear it breathing again, I think. So we started out with, to recap, a cutting compound pad and also we took a measurement of the thickness of the paint to see what we have to work with. Since it's an older car, we went with a less aggressive finesse compound that we're working on. And then we finished it up with a polish which, and a sealer, which is seal and squill. And when we were done, I don't know if the camera can pick that up with the silver paint, but it's pretty impressive. Oh, and you can see the kind of progress we made there. Nothing afterwards. Yeah cheap trick you see on YouTube all the time, but nonetheless, I couldn't resist. So there you go. There's the tutorial on the beginner's guide to bringing back a car's paint while using a buffer. And let's move on from there. What up? Hey, how did the tutorial go? Oh, Paint's looking pretty good. Yeah, I didn't do that side, but over there, I think we're on our way. It's starting to come together. It's got a nice soft feel to it. So. Yeah. It's looking better. Yeah, we might need some work still. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I do needs some work still. You still doing something with the windows here? What's yep. That? I'm going to go through and really show everyone the right way to clean windows and protect them, especially as we're coming into fall and it starts getting a little bit wetter. Nice. Cool. Nice little overspray there. <laughs> Is that, is that compound? Yeah, that's okay, enough, okay? It was a rookie move, but I was talking while I was doing it. It was spraying everywhere. You want me to call cut? Every time I make a mistake, we'll never get anywhere. However, I'm gonna go through, and I think it's so vital to a good detail to make sure these windows are as transparent as they can possibly get. So I'm gonna show the viewers some of the techniques we've developed, some that we've borrowed, some we've been inspired by over the years to really make windows just look awesome and be a big part of the entire look of the car. Okay, well, it's not our car, so don't mess it, don't mess it up. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, good luck. All right, I'll get started on this. <laughs> that really was a rookie move. Well, anyway, you guys heard Josh and I talking and me pontificating about how important it is to have clean glass when doing a great detail or transformation of a car. It really can make 20% of the difference on what you feel and see when you walk up to it. So I'm gonna go through right now how we go about cleaning and getting windows as transparent as possible. And I think that's good right now because not only do we like to clean them, we like to make them hydrophobic, particularly as we're coming into the fall season because we want that rain just beating and flying right off all the time, no matter what the weather conditions are. So I'll show you how we go about doing that. First of all, what we're gonna do wipe off the overspray off the windshield or the windshield wipers. We're going to get those out of the way. And I like to start with a hot microfiber towel that's pretty, you know, pretty moist. And we're going to go through and we're going to clean all the surface gunk off the windows. So by now, 
you probably know we're sort of crazy about covering all areas when we're working on them. So we love that cross hatch pattern. But I'm gonna take this hot cloth and get all that surface gunk off. And once I'm there, we're basically gonna come back and buff it out. Now, anyone who's driven on a sunny day sees the little sparkles in their windows. That's really tree sap on there. And we wanna be able to trim that off and get that back down to the glass. And you can do a lot of scrubbing to make that happen. A technique that we've learned that we really like is to use a razor blade. Now, some people get a little jittery when we say razor blade because you know windshields have a plastic coating over them so they don't shatter on impact. So you really want to be careful here, but once again, like with all surfaces of the car, it comes down to keeping it lubricated and not rubbing a dry surface against a dry surface. And if you follow those rules, you won't get into trouble. So it's pretty awesome. We use one of our detailers called Luster Lube, and that's because it has such great lubricating qualities and it's so slippery that we like to go through. And once we've lubricated the window and the blade, we're going to go through here and just start chopping off all the debris and road grime that goes with this. Now remember, keep it plenty wet and you're going to feel the glass start to smooth out. Now, I'm not going to do the entire window so we can demonstrate and not eat up too much time. But after we're done, we're going to wipe it down. And then we're going to move to the next phase, which is clay barring the windshield. We're actually going to take our clay bar and our luster lube and go through here and lift off now the small debris that the razor blade didn't catch. So let's come right back to that. Let me grab the clay bar and we'll get it done. Okay, so now we've cut down the really big debris that has been stuck to this window. We're gonna go down to the smaller stuff with our clay and our luster loop. Now what we wanna do is start out by lubricating the clay and then come back and do the window. The nice thing about this is, this is also very hydrophobic, so it's gonna keep that rain from sticking. And we're gonna come across and make a pass we're gonna pick up all the debris. Now make sure you keep it nice and wet so it doesn't stick to the window. Cross hatching it, you'll feel the debris coming right off of there. And there you go, we've really smoothed out the window. It wasn't that bad, but we picked up quite a bit of debris, but I think we got most of it with the blade. Now that we're done there, we're gonna come back, take our microfiber towel rub it down. That feels great. All right. The last and final step, now that we've beautified it, it lithium is always to protect it. And back in the day, there was a number of different sprays you could put on there to repel rain. However, with technology also comes more advantages. So we like to use a ceramic on the windshield just because it's so impervious to temperature and it is so hydrophobic. Most of the time I don't even use my windshield wipers because the rain is just flying off of it as quick as it lands on there. And you're gonna experience the same thing if you finish off with a little bit of ceramic on here. So what we're gonna do is take a completely different towel. We don't wanna mix them up. And we're gonna come through and we're gonna spray a coat on here. Now what we're gonna do is spread it in an even pattern coming across, making sure we don't have any high spots. Now on glass, you can take it off as quickly as you liked, or you can let it haze for a minute. I like to rub it until I can't see it and really work it into that outer layer of urethane that covers the window because there's a lot of pores in there. And the more you work that in, the better it's going to adhere to the glass. And now we're going to flip our cloth start to buff it. Not bad. So there's the steps. We start out with a well lubricated blade, 
scrape off the bigger debris. Then we move down to our clay bar, well lubricated as well, and bring it down and take off all the small matter that's on there. And then after we've got it perfectly smooth, we protect it with ceramic and make it hydrophobic. So there you go. Now let's move to the inside of the windows. Okay, so here we are at the part of cleaning windows that we all hate the most, but it really is the part that gets overlooked the most as well. And as you're driving down the road in your clean car, you can still see smudges and smears, and they're really coming from the inside of the car when you turn on the defrost and so forth. They put a haze over that window, and if you only get it halfway, you almost make it worse than if you hadn't touched it at all. But how do you get up in there and get it clean? Well, we grapple with that problem all the time, especially with my hand-eye coordination. So what we like to do is start over in the passenger side. And as you notice, I'm still using luster lube instead of a window cleaner because I really like how it puts a streak-free shine on the glass. It just looks so good when it's done. And so what we do is we certainly don't want to go through and be spraying the window from the inside and watching it drift all over the interior. So we're going to start out by putting the luster lube into a microfiber towel. I start with my hand this way and then I rotate it this direction so I can get all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to do once again, straight lines, and then a cross hash motion, making sure that I catch all the corners. I like to border it out and make sure that all the glass is covered. Now I'm gonna switch hands and come back again around the border and straight across. And that's the best way you're gonna get your windows to be completely flawless. Now, the other thing you don't want to forget is your rear view mirror. I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but it has the exact haze that we had on the windshield. You can see little finger marks where people have adjusted the mirror. So we're going to come in, hit our cloth again, come down over, give it a good rub. So you get that haze off of there. And then we're going to dry it out, getting all the edges. Now, when you look through your rear view mirror, Wow, so clean. And that's what having clean glass is gonna do for your detail job. And let's go from there. Okay, so we've just about gone completely around the 993 and it's time to do the little details that make such a big difference. And I like to save this for last because this really makes the paint pop and that's our trim serum. I'll go through and take all these oxidized plastics and really bring them back to life. And what makes this product so different is the ingredients that we use. It isn't an oil, it isn't a dye. It is actually filled with polymers and plasticizers. The exact same thing that your car loses and the plastic trim loses as the sun beats against it and the UV rays start to evaporate that. And that's what causes this sort of oxidation. So the trim serum really just doesn't mask it but it almost heals it and it will last you for months when properly applied. So we like to take a little applicator sponge and just basically start out and get down in here and really get these grooves. And you're gonna watch this plastic transform, not to look shiny, but to look like it did when it came out of the factory. Now I'm gonna finish up this grill and then I want you to come in back and next week, tune in, watch Josh take care of the interior. Let's see how our new technique for hydrating leather works. And don't forget, hit the subscribe button and tell us what you think. Send us your comments and emails. We'd love to know what you want to see more on the show. And we're going to see you next week. Thanks so much.